Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, here on the 9th of March again. Tonight, don't forget, uh, spring forward. Um, survey says about 62% of us are tired of changing our clocks. I'm not sure why the other 38% like changing their clocks, but again, do that tonight at uh, before 2 a.m. Spring is just about uh, a little over nine days away here, so um, 19 March, or about 11.06 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, for the official, according to the sun, start of spring. The next big event to look forward to here, again, if you're into this uh, kind of thing, is the big uh, Great American Solar Eclipse uh, on the 8th of April. Everyone in this little shaded area here across from Texas to Maine will have about three to four minutes of totality, uh, so you might want to head to those locations. Uh, we're thinking about heading to Niagara Falls because it'll be in the middle of this path here. So, again, book your plans quickly here because pretty much all these locations are uh, pretty much packed out, sold out um, for hotel rooms. Looking right now, the strong El Nino looks like it's going to collapse to a typical to a strong La Nina. The CFS model bottom left there uh, was did very, very well last year predicting the, the very strong El Nino while some of the other models were not hinting at getting that strong. So we're going to lean a little more to the CFS model down here, showing, a, again, a strong La Nina by summer. And again, you can already see the, the water bubbling to the surface here. So we'll look at the subsurface. Again, we're much above average water temperatures. A very strong El Nino back on the start of January. Now look at it, below normal. As again, the equatorial Pacific off of uh, South uh, Mexico, Ecuador regions. So again, all this subsurface, this is a cross-section across from Indonesia to Ecuador here. But that cold, below normal water temperatures, subsurface is bubbling to the surface. So again, goodbye El Nino and hello La Nina. It'll take a while for the atmosphere to respond to this. It won't be instantaneously. But again, the unfortunate thing by it collapsing by summer is that it looks to be a all things pointing to an intense uh, hurricane season. In fact, we're projecting um, clients should check their email box here Friday for our 2024 outlook again, but uh, projecting over 24 systems here. So making it the third most active season in history. And again, I think unlike last year, where we did have to contend with the, the shear from an El Nino um, this year, none of that. So again, everything with warm waters, no shear, um, all things point to a intense season. And uh, Texas is kind of our ground zero. Um, one reason here for all the wet weather, we've had one of the wettest um, starts to uh, the winter here, you know, here in January, 20, since 20, January 1st, 2024, here has been very wet in the U.S. and other areas of the world, um, is the Tonga volcano that happened back in uh, January, about a little over two years ago, January 2022 pumped about 146 million tons of water vapor into the atmosphere, some sulfuric acid as well, which created a brief global, global cooling period across the southern hemisphere a couple of years back. Uh, but now we're still all dealing with this uh, water vapor, just, you know, again, 146 million tons of it extra, um, pumped 63,000, 100,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So that was... Estimates are that this moisture, you can see the explosion here, was um, probably going to last about five to ten years, so at least another two to eight years of this higher than average water vapor in the atmosphere, which does two things. Uh, obviously, it can make it rain a lot if you're in the right type of cycle, like we are right now in the U.S., and it can also warm the planet because water vapor tends to trap the solar infrared radiation coming from the Earth, and it keeps, it, keeps us a little bit warmer. Um, so one thing again, we see the drought here, the drought in the U.S. has continued to make steady improvement here. And in fact, we'll make a lot of improvement here across the Iowa, parts of uh, eastern Iowa has still been kind of dry here this uh, winter, but uh, looks like they're going to get some very heavy rain here the next two weeks. So this will continue to make uh, improvements here. Again, 47% of the country in dry to drought phases, which is uh, a little bit below average. We should be about 48%, um, way off of the peak, about 82% back in November um, 2022. So again, an improving trend. We'll get wetter and wetter as we go through the spring 2024. Looking at last week's summer here, weekend here today across the world, U.S. 4.7 warmer than last year, warmest in 24 years, third warmest in 39, so very warm. 110% uh, wetter than last year, wettest in 13, third wettest in 39 years. While snowfall was down 71% uh, where people live, population areas at least in three years, six at least in 39 years. Don't tell that to the folks buried in the Sierras and Tahoe, uh, Lake Tahoe areas. Um, again, pummeled with, uh, with feet of snow here. Uh, the past couple weeks back, they'll get a little bit more here. Uh, China was the cold spot, uh, coldest in six years, way below uh, last year's level, so very cold there. Uh, a little bit cool in India, uh, and some much-needed uh, rain if you look there in Brazil, uh, wettest in 13 years. So that's good news for their 
second safrina crop that's starting to go on the ground here. This week, uh, 16 March, we're still lingering some severe weather moving off the southeast coast here. So some severe weather uh, this past week. And again, a little bit continuing here this week and maybe again this coming week ahead. See that area of purples of four or five plus inches of rain from Houston toward uh, Birmingham, Alabama. U.S. overall, 9.1 warmer than last year. Warmest in eight, six warmest in 39. Uh, snowfall down, a little misleading, 84% less than last year, least than eight years, seventh least in 39. But uh, some snow here, this potential late this weekend in the New England high elevations uh, could be pretty heavy. Uh, and some lingering snow in the high elevations of the west. Rainfall's up about 4% over last year, making it the wettest in eight years, eighth wettest in 39 years. So again, still continuing that wet pattern. We'll look at the six-day snowfall outlook here. Not a lot here today. You can see the influence of this uh, cold front coming through here um, tomorrow. Again, some, some high elevations of four to eight plus and uh, really high elevations, you know, over a foot of snow in New England and a little bit of lake effect kicking in as well. Monday, Tuesday here, not much. Uh, Wednesday, mostly in the west. If we just aggregate the six-day trends here, again, we see that it's still way down on a population basis. Only about 22% of the population centers it, but, you know, heavy in the west and uh, moderate to heavy in New England. Looking next week here, again, uh, patterns moderating a bit. Again, as we'll talk about the polar vortex here, falling apart as it does this time of year in the spring. But um, So the U.S. 6.6 warmer than last year, 10th warmest in 39 years, but uh, you know, definitely not the extreme temperatures we saw here this, uh, this past week. Snowfall up 61% more than last year, most in 11 years, 9th most in 39 years, and rainfall also up 71% wetter than a year ago, 8th wettest. And again, notice that... Uh, Maybe overdone in the plains. Uh, again, probably not that much snow, but again, certainly some snow in the plains into the upper Midwest, north of uh, Chicago and in New England again here, and even maybe down into the Poconos in northern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. So again, just because you're mild doesn't mean you can't necessarily get enough cold air for a day or two uh, to give you some you know, moderate to heavy snow. So we'll see about this again uh, as the polar vortex begins to collapse. So chart left is a 14-day animation of the northern hemisphere polar vortex, and chart right is the Southern Hemisphere polar vortex, which uh, doesn't exist in the summertime, but uh, again, you see signs of it forming. You can see there in the chart right, they're starting to form in the upper atmosphere over Antarctica. Again, so we'll, again, as this polar vortex weakens and collapses, which is typical this time of year in the spring, it just goes away. Um, that's why we tend to get these cold snaps in the spring, because now the, uh, there's nothing to preclude the uh, cold air from staying at the North Pole. Strong polar vortex kind of keeps it all bottled up there, and that's what it did a lot of this uh, winter, other than January. Um, so we'll see here. This can uh, We actually do believe there's going to be some cold snaps in uh, April and even early May. We do think there's a late spring frost in the U.S. Uh, first week of May. Um, so again, something to look ahead to. Look at the world two-week outlook here. Weekending, uh, so this is a two-week trend now, 10 through 23. So a little misleading because you're aggregating some warms and colds and warms. Uh, but the overall theme is obviously pretty warm and wet on a world scale. In fact, you can see the precip here again. So, again, still ample rainfall there across Brazil where they need it for their crops. And, uh, again, getting a lot of rainfall in the western Corn Belt where Iowa still needs some play some catch-up here with their uh, drought pocket. Uh, but, again, that'll get some much improved uh, conditions here the next couple weeks. So, folks, we hope you have a great week ahead, and we'll be back here again this time next week. Mm -hmm.